I just wanted to give um, a little bit of background first and then invite um, Nancy Montes um, that is I working on this like reimagining uh, nature project just to also say a few words before the, the presentation. Um, so this is the a class that is like undergrad and grad students at the University of Utah in city and metropolitan planning. We are called the West Side Studio. Um, we have been working in the West Side since 2004. Um, so various instructors dedicated to do classes um, along with like residents in the in the West Side and um, the previous semester in the fall, I started to work um, with uh, the Public Lands Division. And for those that do not know me, my name is Ibis Garcia Zambrana, and I am an assistant professor in City and Metropolitan Planning. And I teach classes that deal with um, community engagement and uh, service uh, learning. And uh, last semester, the students, um, and these are master students from the uh, community engagement in planning course I started to work in the public uh, lands master plan and they were in window one of engagement they collected a lot of um, surveys and they did like focus groups in the west side thank you to those of you that um, participated as part of that and I will be posting um, just in a little bit the website with the previous information that uh, we gather during like window one of engagement and for window two, which is like um, through the West Side Studio. Um, so we have tried to um, dig deeper into some of the questions of, um, of equity, especially when thinking about um, the East Side and the West Side and um, the students like a few weeks ago did like some demographics um, of like uh, we chose actually like 20 parks and 10 in the west side and 10 in the east side and uh, we pick like half mile from the park to analyze the demographics and something that we notice is that um, the neighborhoods are very very different and um, we should think about what about amenities uh, that are needed like based on the on the different um, populations and um, the students are right now working more on the analysis of like that data collected and um, part of that it has been this presentation from today in where um, we went and conducted like an audit so the students went and they um, analyzed three different parks and there was like several questions about the neighborhood um, it's in terms of like access and also um, assets or amenities um, and and we, we will see like the three questions that uh, we were doing in this like um, survey I will also post um, the survey and those materials so you can look at them on your own. Part of the idea is that um, maybe the public lands division could think about adopting this tool or community members can use it uh, on their own. Um, however, what you will see today is like a very like bare eyes view because it's like 20 parts, we will go very fast and um, we will not have a lot of numbers for you. So the students will be crunching and actually creating scores for the for the parks, but right now what you will see is more like a qualitative um, kinds of, of assessment. And um, the question that we want to get at is like if qualitatively the parks in the east side are different from the west side, and try to understand that a little bit better. And I just wanted um, for Nancy Montes and. Um, in the, I would say, like the engineering department. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, I, you could say Salt Lake City. So I'm yeah. Monty, uh, work, I've, uh, I work with Salt Lake City. I'm a landscape architect, park planner. Uh, I've been seven years with the public lands division and uh, just recently moved to the engineering division 
to and really still working on all parks projects, but taking a bigger role in managing the projects through the process. So it's still very much the city. So um, it's probably one of the few uh, positions in the city where you can uh, change divisions and work on the same projects. <laughs> but it's uh, I, anyways, so I, I first wanna thank Dr. Garcia and her students, um, you guys uh, last semester and this semester have brought so much capacity, interest and enthusiasm to the project. And, and I wanna thank you for that. But as Eva said, we are, um, Public Lands is doing their comprehensive master plan. So this is developing a 20 year vision for the public lands uh, into the future and how do we grow what things are important. And um, we have been able to do uh, a significantly larger and more robust engagement process because of the work and the collaboration that we've had with the university. And I think it's also brought a whole, so many more eyes to the project and, and perspectives, which are so valuable, especially, um, you know, I think we tend to be, uh, um, we have one view. And so when we can get views from everyone else and your eyes doing these park audits bring a whole lever, new level of understanding, they're fresh eyes and you can see things. And I think um, this question that we've, we've had uh, persist for a long time is that, the east side parks are better than the west side, but I think we in, as a city really endeavor to um, kind of give equal service to all of our parks and then, um, but what does that mean? And I think one of the things that Evis brought up with uh, the uh, demographic data that the communities are all very different. So maybe we need to think differently than treating everything the same. And so we're really excited to, to hear what you've seen and observed. And I think um, I'm gonna kind of call out, I have, we have some colleagues here. So Kristen Riker, who's the deputy director of public lands is joining us tonight. Lee Bullwinkle is also here, she, who is the parks division director and our two operations managers who are in charge of maintaining all of the parks in the city are here. So Troy Baker and Kyle Shields. And we talked about it many times before this, that we're really excited to see what you guys learn. And, and this kind of study is something that um, really is a unique opportunity. So um, I think that's all I really wanted to say. And we're eager to hear what you learned. Well, thank you so much, um, Nancy. I posted um, on the chat the website um, with some of the work that the students have done so far. Uh, we have been recording the, the presentations from the students, so we are uh, actually recording these. Um, we will only they, we will only like use the part um, for that the students are presenting, um, and just I like, posted in this like website. Um, just like for the posterity. And then we have here um, the park audit tool. It's a Word document. You can see um, the tool that the students um, use in order to conduct this assessment that they will be um, presenting. So I'm going to be then sharing um, my screen and just start with the presentation. And I think it will take me just a little bit because I cannot find it immediately. All right. So let's um, get started. I also wanted to ask, I forgot to ask this um, before, if you can just like put your name and the organization that you 
represents. Um, you can do it by renaming yourself also put, or put it in the chat. Um, so we know who is um, here. And also, if you have um, any questions, um, you can put them in the chat as you think about them. And then later on, um, we hope to have like 20 minutes or so for questions. And we will be able to look at those um, questions and uh, ask for points of clarification if needed. Uh, with that, we're just going to get um, started with the presentation. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Brandon, and I'm a graduate student in the um, Westside Studio class this semester. Uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you to all of our, uh, our guests today. Uh, we appreciate you being here, and I know that we're all excited to share our uh, park audit findings with you. Um, I'm going to be talking today about the Ninth South River Park, um, and I'll get right into it because we have a lot of parks oh. to cover. So, um, so to start off with, what is needed to improve access? and the surrounding neighborhood near the Nine South River Park. Well, I would start by um, probably adding a sign that just tells you what the name of the park is because when I was walking around the park, I couldn't find a single sign that said Ninth South River Park on it. And I think just some something to let people know that what the park is would be very helpful. Um, there is a parking area at this park. So if you uh, are driving to the park, you've got a place to you know park your car. But if you're arriving by bike, you don't really have any place to lock your bike up. Um, you can see on the bottom left there, that's the parking area and that's my bike kind of in there, but there's no bike racks anywhere in or near the park. So that's uh, an area for improvement for sure. Um, and then installing street lights and just improving lighting in general on the streets surrounding the park, especially the neighborhood streets. Um, Genesee Avenue in particular leads directly into the park. And I think that's an important street to make sure that we have Good lighting on to make people feel safe when they're walking to the park, especially in like the evening hours. Um, secondly, what we can do to improve park activity areas in Ninth South River Park, uh, I would say starting with fixing the cracks and uneven surfaces on the trails in the park would be good. Um, there are some imperfections in the pavement that might prevent people with wheelchairs or walkers or anybody else using um, like mobility devices. Um, there's a little bit of a litter problem in the, um, the main kind of open space area there. I just noticed that there were pieces of litter kind of scattered about in certain areas and that it just makes it not a very inviting place to be. Um, planting more trees could be helpful to provide some shade, maybe not necessarily in the whole green space area because there is some benefit to having like just an open field in the park, but um, maybe concentrating trees around things like the trail and the picnic areas so that, you know, in the hottest months of the summer, um, you know, people have shade and they can comfortably use the park. And then finally, the open space area has some patchy areas with the grass and just fixing those up could just make it a little bit more of an inviting space. Um, and then finally, to improve park quality and safety, um, I would say one of the biggest issues I saw was graffiti on the picnic tables. That top picture there shows you probably the worst example but all four, of the, uh, all four of the picnic tables at the park did have some sort of graffiti on them. Um, and it just doesn't make it a very inviting place to you know, have a meal with your family or whatever. Um, some of the uh, tables are also damaged. So fixing those or just replacing them all together, whichever is easiest and most effective um, could benefit the park as well. Um, on that bottom left picture, you'll see a empty concrete circle. Um, there's supposed to be a picnic table there but there isn't one. I don't know what happened to it, but um, maybe adding a new picnic table there would be helpful. Um, again, cleaning up the litter would be helpful to improve the quality. Uh, there's also some areas of the park where I noticed broken glass um, and, sorry, <laughs> there's some broken glass in the park on like the trails and um, around the picking tables and that's just kind of like unacceptable because you know you want you want the parks to be places where kids can play safely and things like that um and then if i sorry our slides are having a little bit of issues here but i uh if i remember correctly my other two points were just add some trash cans near the picnic tables so people have an opportunity to you know responsibly take care of their garbage and then finally just adding some more lighting around the park would be helpful as well because there's only about four light posts in the whole park so 
Um, and that, with that, I'll turn it over to our next student. Yeah, I cannot go back, so I don't know who, who is doing these slides. <laughs> Oh, sorry, who's on the slides? Um, hi, my name is Anissa. I am, um, last semester urban ecology student. And uh, I did my park uh, audit on Davis Park. Um, what I found out while walking through the park is that um, how um, improving the park surrounding neighbor was that um, the bike lanes on the street, there is like, although there was like a bike sign on the, when I came in, there was no bike um, lanes on the street. Like it would have been nicer if there was like lines uh, telling you this is the park um, bike lanes. And then um, also uh, like um, the paths that was um, like, it, it was big enough, but then also on the side there was like um, benches and uh, it, it would have been nicer if like uh, the bike paths and the walking paths were separated. And uh, I couldn't find any um, public transportation nearby. And also when I was searching for the address, um, uh, there was no exact address, but like if, if I Google searched it, it would have just said um, Davis Park and, uh, and with just the zip code and that was all. Uh, what could have been improved in the activity areas was that um, there were only two benches and uh, the the park isn't that big, but I think it, it could need it needs more um, benches, and uh, there was no um, picnic tables. And uh, also, if you can see in that picture, my sister was was on the swings and uh, she was having trouble moving the swings. I think uh, it needs to be uh, repaired a little bit. And uh, also, um, the quality and safety of the park. What was lacking was that there was only one um, light in the middle of the park. And uh, I think, I know, although it was like a neighborhood uh, park, uh, I think it could use more lights. And um, uh, there was only one drinking fountain. I think there should be one uh, on like, either, both sides of uh, the park. And uh, it was missing um, emergency call button. I think all the parks were uh, missing, but, I think just for safety purposes, um, we could, it could use um, emergency call buttons. Hey, so our equity audit was on Imperial Park, which is just southeast of the Sugar House Park. And it was constructed six years ago, so it's still in really good condition. Um, to improve the access in surrounding neighborhoods, we noticed that it took just under 10 minutes to get to the closest bus stop. So adding some wayfinding and um, making it easier to get to and from the bus stop and the park would help um, with the accessibility. And then we also noticed that the surrounding streets didn't have any visible bike lanes or bike route signs. So either implementing some bike lanes um, and those signs could help with the awareness of um, bicycle traffic. And then with that, the two adjacent um, intersections to the park had two-way yield signs, but using uh, crosswalk or pedestrian crossing signs could help um, increase that awareness for the pedestrians going to and from the park. And then in regards to improving the park activity areas, we noticed that the distance from the picnic area and drinking fountain, which were next to each other, to the actual play structure and this sand um, 
area that you can see in the picture were pretty far there on the opposite ends of the park. So either, you know, somehow making that closer by installing a closer drinking fountain or connecting that um, a little bit easier could help with that distance. And then we noticed that there is shade for the play structure in the summer, but the surrounding areas and benches did not have it. So including some shade for the parents and supervisors could help um, make people stay longer in the park. And then finally to improve the park quality and safety, you notice that the only lights within the park were at the picnic shelter. There were some floodlights, but adding lights near the activity areas and open green space could help with safety during the evening and at night. And then on the north and west park entrances, uh, this in the picture is the west entrance, so it did have the park name, but uh, we think maybe there could be some park signs that include the hours and park rules, um, just so everyone entering the park in different directions can be more aware of that. And then on those park signs, adding contact information such as the phone number or email for the public lands division could help um, people at the park communicate more directly with the maintenance and other issues. Nick, thank you. So um, I was able to perform the park audit in Inglewood Park and sorry, my name is Claudia and I'm a student in the city planning program. Um, and this particular park is at the corner of McClellan Street and Princeton Avenue. And you can go on to the next slide. Perfect. Um, so in terms of access to the actual neighborhood, the signature connection to this park is McClellan Trail, which is um, a low stress walking and biking route um, that follows the Jordan and Salt Lake Canal from 9th and 9th to um, the Brickyard um, commercial area. So it's a really key connection um, to make it to the park, but also to surrounding areas. But there is um, need for more signage and traffic calming measures to facilitate easy and safe access. Um, it, it's, you know, there's no bike lane markings in the surrounding streets to, del to delineate bike use. Um, and there, there are, you know, they are pretty wide streets as well. So having some way to um, calm traffic that goes into the directions that are kind of, that kind of corner into the park would be great. Um, the, there's also quite a lack of nearby transit stops that connect to the park and the accompanying trail. So, um, the, the journey to the park um, is, is easy and somewhat convenient for those that are using a car, but um, in terms of, you know, biking and walking access, there could be some improvements in there as well. And then for what is needed to improve the park activity areas, um, generally more vers versatility. Um, when I arrived, actually, there, there was a, a child with her parent um, playing on the playground, but then um, just through you know, my observation, they, they were able to play for a little bit until um, they went to their parent and told them that they were bored. So it was just um, a, like a laughable experience, but at the same time, um, you know, there, there, there is a consideration for maybe more um, park equipment or activity for diverse abilities in multiple age, age ranges. Um, I think the child, I couldn't quite um, identify how old they were, but um, having some park equipment that delineates between different ages and has, um, more uses maybe across the year as well. There is a large space, a green space behind the park as you see there um, that perhaps could be used for um, more open field uses, but there, there is a floodlight as well that is for that open green space area, but doesn't really reach the playground quite as much. And I went during the day, so I wasn't able to see it fully lit, but um, there is limited lighting um, in that park and then also along the trail, just um, a few hundred feet in, into it just from the park. Um, and, you know, generally I think creating more placemaking opportunities for the connecting waterways, trails, and the neighborhood uses would be great. There's a few that are on McClellan Street that show you that the McClellan Trail is intersecting the park, um, but creating some more pavement markings, um, something to, to engage and, um, you know, apply to the park and the surrounding uses would be great to help activate some of the children that may be playing there, or um, there's quite a few um, dog um, owners also that were walking around that area. Um, and again, for the accessibility component, um, the park itself could be improved to um, accommodate and, and activate more um, uses and abilities in multiple ages. So it is, it is, it is a smaller park, um, but it is at a very important nexus with the McClellan Trail and a few other surrounding land uses. So 
um, the park activity could improve um, a little bit in that sense. And then to the next slide. Um, finally, with this to improve park quality and safety, just going back to that, um, the park and trail signage, um, there are some areas of the park and you can see in the picture here where these signs have been notably weathered or have been tampered with. Um, this particular one, I'm not sure which one is, you know, if it's been tampered with or if it's just been weathered down, but um, there's that sign and there's a few areas in the park playground as well where there is some markings, um, not necessarily graffiti perhaps, but um, definitely some Sharpie or just um, perhaps maybe some children or teens just kind of wanting to make their mark per se, but um, there's also a, a sticker um, on the main park sign. Um, so just little things like that that could you know improve the park quality and hopefully um, really reiterate the placemaking of the area. Um, and then also the access and circulation to the park. Um, the, the intersection of the park and trail path um, and the neighborhood alleyway just kind of presents a potential conflict. And you could have you could see that from the first slide that we that we saw with the McClellan trail signage. Um, so having you know more signage or somehow something to um, provide more uh, delineation of uses with the park users, the trail users, and those private homeowners that are parking in that area, um, just to avoid any any kind of conflict um, or crashes. But generally, it is a pocket park. It's embedded in the neighborhood and has a lot of potential. Thank you. Hi, I'm Seamus Guida. I had a uh, Jackson Park. Um, and I had actually been around the area quite a few times, but had never known that there was a park uh, there. And so one of the things that I thought was important was some wayfinding signs showing, uh, you know, where the park is as you approach it, because I basically found it on Google Maps and was able to get to it that way. But uh, without that, I wouldn't have known, you know, that there was a park there. Um, and beyond that, the, the park sign itself was a bit weathered and they had uh, the name and then they had uh, the rules on the back, but there wasn't any hours um, and it didn't show much other information. And also one other thing that I noted was that everything was uh, in English. And I know that in Salt Lake City, um, there is a, a, port, a large portion of the Spanish speaking community. Um, so I figured that that could be something that could be improved. Um, and then as well as improving some of the access for those with physical disabilities as well. Uh, the playground itself was pretty nice. Um, there, it seemed like that there was enough features for kids to have fun on. There was a family playing there uh, while I was there, or you know, some children playing while I was there, and they seemed very interested and like they were having a good time. Um, I think that some of the features could be updated to possibly include some educational games um, that would uh, possibly break communication barriers through English and Spanish-speaking children uh, to get them to collaborate and enjoy time together. Uh, as well as the picnic area and the grill, uh, the grill area were kind of bare, I guess. Um, and it seemed that there was at one point a roof on at least some of this, some of the, the structures that were in here and some of these metal poles that you'll see in the next slide. Uh, and I figured they must have gotten destroyed in the storm, but right now there's uh, no uh, roofing structure on them. Um, I guess my main concern for this portion was that there was a Probably I, when I pulled up, there's probably about six broken beer bottles um, and then more beer bottles that were uh, throughout the park. Um, so there was quite a bit of broken glass around. Um, and then there was a lot of brush debris uh, and there wasn't very much lighting. I believe there was two light posts. Um, and I think that that could be uh, illuminated more without increasing the light pollution. And then these metal poles that you see, I'm assuming that they were there for holding something that created shade. Uh, but right now, basically, there's a lot of rust um, and children like to climb things. And so I, I guess the, my concern with that is that children would be climbing that and then could potentially injure themselves. And that's about it. Hi there, my name is Leah Marshall, and I was tasked to take a look at the Jake Garn Park. Um, so the Jake Garn Park is really only about a half an acre large, so this is the entirety of the park. Um, it is very hard to find. There's not, there aren't any signs pointing you in the direction. It's kind of tucked behind a neighborhood. And I think creating more knowledge about the park itself would be adding signs to show people where they are and maybe making a map so that people are able to see 
maybe where they live in correspondence to where the park is, not necessarily a map for the park itself, but maybe in a like, you're here in reference to the neighborhood because it doesn't seem to be a very largely used park. Um, so a little back information, Jake Green, Jake Garn, it was the mayor of Salt Lake City from 1974 to 1933 and was also a pilot for NASA. So he had a very large impact on Salt Lake City itself. In fact, the street that the park is on is also named after him. Um, so something that I thought would be, a, that would improve the park activity would be maybe putting in a statue or a memorial to kind of uh, provide information as to why there is this area um, along with kind of bringing context to uh, more of the story of the area rather than just having a patch of grass with two benches on either end. The way to improve the park quality and safety, there were beer cans on the ground along with, um, there was like a pair of dirty socks and some other garbage and no garbage cans. Um, so people are obviously going there and not taking what they're bringing to the park or simply when they walk by, they just see a plot of grass and are throwing their trash onto that area. Um, so I think adding uh, trash cans to the uh, intersections of the sidewalk would allow you, would allow for there to be a lot less garbage on the, on the park and adding better lighting. These light fixtures look as though they haven't been maintenanced in years. They are, uh, the glass is corroded from the inside and it looks as though if you were to go at night, you'd get a very almost brown light that wouldn't uh, light up the whole area. I think there's a way to use directional lighting that, wouldn't in, that would not increase light pollution, but also light up the area better so that people would be able to use the park at night or in the later hours of the day and still feel safe. All right, my name is Jamie Cross and I'm going to cover Jefferson Park. And on the first slide are some points about improving access and the surrounding neighborhood. And so there's no signage with the park name and general park rules. However, there was a sign regarding off-leash dog hours and rules for dogs, as well as some waste cleanup bags. And along with that, there were only two nearby points of access to the park and playground itself. Um, and they were on opposite ends and one of them had stairs and then the other one was a ramp for more access. But then the playground also did not have any ground level play activities for inclusivity of all developmental and ability levels. And then to improve the park activity areas, I was thinking about adding more vibrant colors to make them more sensory engaging. A drinking fountain, because there's like a big field to run in and play in. And then there was only one bench that had coverage to allow for shading. And it also wasn't close to the playground as the other benches were. And then, a bathroom was something that was like really mentioned on some Google reviews I read about it. And um, so I thought that would also be useful. And then for park quality and safety, I was thinking a recycling bin in addition to the true the two trash bins that were there, which could possibly help with the next point of like a general cleanup because there was a lot of litter in the area. And then more lighting, because other than the street lights, there were no lights in the park and it is a relatively bigger park. And then more surveillance in the area, because again, like looking up in some Google reviews that there's a large homeless population and drug use in the area. I didn't see that for like the 30 minutes that I was there, but I have heard that other people have. And so that's all I have, thank you. Hi, my name is Izzy and I was looking at Laird Park, which is um, located at 1832 East Princeton Ave, which is in the Yale Crest neighborhood. 
regarding accessibility, the report can be improved in terms of signage, transit, bike routes, and crosswalks. While there is signage with rules and a park name, it isn't very visible or in obvious places, so you don't really see it unless you're specifically looking for it like I was. Um, adding a large sign that displays all relevant information um, can enhance park visibility and character. Um, I didn't find any transit stops within sight, and there were no crosswalks to the park, and bike routes had signs but no physical lanes on the road. Um, because of this, there are accessibility challenges for both local and more distant users and could be improved by bringing tr transit lines closer to the park and increasing presence of traffic markers, including both crosswalks and bike lanes. Um, while the playground seemed well used and liked, the colors could be more vibrant and diverse to draw um, different um, ages and abilities to the equipment. Um, currently, the playground area is directly up against the sidewalk, which only has a small buffer from the road. And in the picture here, um, I was standing on the edge of the road to take this picture and there's a gap in the fence um, and adding um, more fencing to block between the playground and the road could help improve safety. And finally, adding bathrooms to the park would make it more accessible to a wider array of people who don't necessarily live near the park and can't just go home to use a bathroom. Um, one of the major safety concerns of this park is lighting. The majority of lighting isn't actually in the park and it's on the street. Um, and even these street lights don't seem to be very bright. Changing the type of lighting to be more functional while being mindful of light pollution could help the park feel safer and more secure at night. Um, additionally, bringing in recycling in addition to uh, the trash cans and adding drinking fountains closer to the playground and sports fields would be simple ways to contribute to improved park quality. Hello, I'm Dakota, and I'm presenting with Andrew. Are you here, Andrew? I can start us off. We did uh, Madsen Park on 9 North Chicago Street. So uh, some improvements for access and the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, there aren't any direction, like directional signs leading cars to the park. Um, and there's a main road nearby. So I think it'd be helpful to incorporate a road sign of some sort that notified people where the park is located. Um, and the roads adjacent to the park were very narrow and in super rough condition. So it might be helpful to um, improve the roads, maybe even make them wider if that's possible, or at least uh, add bike lanes. And in terms of parking, all the parking was on the streets. Um, it could be beneficial to add a parking lot as well, if that would be possible. Next. Improvement of the activity areas. Uh, could first stop with increase in the lighting around these areas. The park only has three posts along the perimeter, one on each access side of the park, and they are of the older design, so the quality of light is rather poor, but they're also either located on the other side of the park from the activity areas or in an area where they're overgrown by trees, so the light is filtered and not actually directed towards where it needs to go. And then as you can see in the photographs, the park area activity areas themselves, such as this, what looks to be or once was a basketball court, uh, the there's no nets on the hoops and one of them is missing either from the storm that we had previously or from intentional destruction of property. And along with the pavement is rising and uneven and of asphalt material, rather more of a preferred concrete that's smoother, softer, easier to work with, and um, takes the painting actual good quality looking court. And they also could use some cables and picnic shelters off to the left of this. There's an area where it's paved out at its own private little walkway in a, what could be an intimate space with a nice little tree cove, but it's kind of awkward without any sort of picnic shelter or tables or 
if there once was, um, then it's an idea that should be brought back to that space. And improving the park's quality, if you look at the miniaturized little open space field that the park has, it's predominantly what the park is. Um, it would be nice if to increase the quality, if there could be some sort of mini sports field, uh, like a small soccer field or a, a baseball um, backstop that could kind of attract older ages to use the space. Right now it's kind of more designed towards younger toddlers would really be only used being the playground. Um, and again, improving the, the sports court to attract those ages as well. Yeah, and uh, just to add on to some safety things, um, we already kind of mentioned the lighting. It'd definitely be nice to add some lighting just for visibility purposes. Um, a lot of it is just an open field that could use some lighting. Um, improving the basketball court, the pavement super uneven and uh, smoothing that out would not only make playing basketball more enjoyable, but it would likely prevent injuries such as like twisting your ankle. And also I thought adding bike lanes um, could add to safety for bikers. And not only that, it would probably uh, motivate them to bike rather than walk, which would also, or rather than drive, which would also increase accessibility. Hi, everyone. I'm in Yue. I will talk about the Meadows Park. Next slide, please. And uh, from my takeaway, by my, based on my observation of this park, in the first place that in terms of bike lanes, I believe that more potential bike lanes can be established around the neighborhood in order to encourage people's usage of the park, park in, addition, in addition to the tra transportation nearby the uh, surrounding neighborhood because I saw the bus stop 217 is close to the Meadows Park and the U Utah State Tax Commission, some industrial uses and commercial uses such as uh, for education, such as the Utah State Library Division is also close to the transportation stop nearby the uh, nearby Meadows Park. And for the sidewalks and the pavements, I believe the current existing sidewalks can be possibly renovated to make them more wider and in order to allow visitors to use them in a more convenient manner. That's uh, next slide, please. And uh, in terms of the what is needed to improve the park's activity area, in terms of lighting level, previously my fellows also have mentioned that there is also the same issue happen, happening with the Meadows Park. I believe that more lighting devices or equipment within the park park activity area should be set up and the emerging devices can also be attempted to install in, within the park area in order to make sure the visitors feel more safer to play some activity there because I did not see a lot of lighting, so it's not good. Okay, so the last, last but not least that for the park's quality and safety, I believe the po police officer responding time, time, timeline or timeliness would, would be a major concern. More free, I believe that more frequent police control can be suggested to con conduct within a certain radius, which is close to the park centralized area and the activity region. That purpose was to make sure that any accidents can be dealt with in a highly responsive manner, just in case that police can patrol notice can uh, uh, perceive that happening and can respond to the accident in a more uh, efficient way. That's all I got. Thank you. All right. So I. Oh, we, we cannot hear you because you're muted, Eric. Sorry, I thought I unmuted myself. Can you hear me now? Yes. Wonderful. Well, I had the opportunity to perform the park audit um, at Miami Park. Um, which is in the West Point neighborhood, just a few blocks west of Redwood Road. Um, so looking at the next slide, uh, it's just a nice little pocket park um, serving a residential neighborhood, uh, but there are a few things that could be done to improve it. Um, there's no signage that clarifies park rules or even 
clarifies that you've arrived at Miami Park. Um, and about three fourths of the park is fenced in. So it's a little bit of a shame that people in the cul-de-sac just west of the park have to walk three blocks in, able, in order to access it. So somehow there was some right-of-way agreement or other way to increase accessibility, that would be great. Um, on the next slide, look a little bit about improvement to park activity areas. Uh, there's one playground with a couple swings. It's in pretty good condition, but it probably could use a new uh, layer of paint. Um, it looks like it's getting a little bit worn. And there aren't any light fixtures at all in Miami Park. And the nearest street light is almost a block away. So there definitely needs to be some lighting improvements. Uh, there aren't very diverse activities available. So maybe exercise stations could be added to attract um, older users or maybe just a restroom or, or drinking fountains to make it a little bit more appealing to be utilized by the neighbors. And the park could use more trees and benches around the large green space. It's uh, about a little over a half acre and there isn't really all that much um, there. And again, just uh, lighting improvements would help with visibility. Hi, my name is Morgan. Um, I surveyed Modesto Park, which is uh, located on the west side um, beneath the Jordan River Park and it's um, in the Glendale district as well. So improvement to access for this park, um, because it's tucked away in a little neighborhood, I think um, having more wayfinding on the, the busier street on 900 West going um, north south would be a great way to bring in traffic to the park and um, give people an understanding where the park is. Google got me there pretty easily, but um, for those who don't know anything uh, about Modesto Park, that'd be a great way to highlight the area. Also, there wasn't a lot of accessibility um, for, for different abilities, I should say. Um, it wasn't very inclusionary in that uh, there wasn't a lot of um, um, ramps or curves up to the park, access into the park. So that could be improved as well. Uh, so the existing infrastructure is pretty outdated um, and not very appealing to the eye. There's a couple of areas that are, um, that were, broken down and graffitied on as well. And they were some nice, unique areas of the park. So it was a shame that that happened. Um, so updating and maintaining the infrastructure that's there would be great. Also, there's a lot of area that is underutilized in this park um, that could be great for you know Frisbee golf or some more art installations as well. And then to improve the park quality and safety, maintaining the natural amenities of the park. Because this park is on the Jordan River, um, there, wasn't, there wasn't a lot of really good access to the Jordan River. And what was at the Jordan River access points, there was a lot of garbage and pollution. So maintaining the Jordan River would be a great asset to this park as well. The dock that ran into the Jordan River um, is pretty outdated looking, but also uh, seemed very hazardous. I didn't even attempt to go on it uh, because it looked very slippery. There was also not a lot of lighting around the crucial um, activity areas of this park as well. So that would be a, a very big improvement for the park. So I was assigned Poplar Grove Park. It is on the west side, just off of Indiana Avenue and uh, around 1200 West. 
And to improve access, there's not a, not a close uh, transit stop uh, near the park. There's one about a block away on each side, but there could be one right off of Indiana Avenue, right next to the, right next to the park. Also some directional signs that lead to the park off the main road, because in some, depending on what way you're coming from, it can be kind of hidden. And also some investment in bike racks because there is a bike lane on Indiana Avenue, but there are no bike racks in the park. The park activity areas, there's a lot of park activity areas, but they just need some updating. The surface of the tennis courts kind of in rough shape and the pickleball lines need to be repainted because they're little things. Uh, the basketball court was good. It also could use some updating with um, some lines painted to show like a three point line or the free throw line just to make it a little more official and make it a little more fun for people playing basketball there. And also the restrooms and water fountains could use some update and have someone keep them a little more sanitary. Uh, to improve park safety and quality, I wasn't there at night and I could see a, some lights, but I don't think it's enough to light the entire park and a lot of the lights were not in or near the activity areas. So that could be a, an opportunity for some improvement. Uh, the trash cans, there were a ton of trash cans in the parking lot, but none of them were near any of the activity areas. So if there were more trash cans, maybe near the playground or the tennis courts, that would be that would be a lot better. Um, also, since the park is large, uh, more than five acres, uh, could be helpful to have an emergency call box. And also, um, I don't have a picture, but I don't think there were any signs showing the park name. So a little better signage would be helpful. And those are some other things that I saw. Thank you. Hey, my name is Shmali Hernandez. I'm Justice. And we had Popperton Park. It's on 1400 Popperton Park Way. Uh, so what is needed to improve the access of the surrounding neighborhood? Um, increasing wayfinding is one of the biggest ones in my opinion. Um, this, taking the same route to get to this park there's also Perry's Hollow Natural Area just a little bit further. And I've been going there for the past two years. And I've driven past this park for two years, not knowing that it was a park. So I feel like that's a pretty big sign and saying that we need to increase the wayfinding around there. And second thing is increasing lighting. The vast majority of the park is completely dark at night. Okay, so um, I also do believe that we also need to improve the, the tree cover and shade in the area because there was inadequate tree cover shade avenues, which would also serve as an avenue to like reduce the, the public connection time with the park. That's especially during the summer. And um, we could also enhance the trail connectivity in the park because of the multiple entries and access to the park. Next slide. So in order to improve park activity areas, um, for, again, in increasing lighting, it's like extremely dark when you drive up there in the middle of the night or like close to night at, at the same time. Um, new goalposts, existing goalposts, if you go up there right now, they're all tattered, they're thrown all across the field. I mean, investing in natural landscape features, there's a lot of space to work with. So I believe you have a lot of options available to you in order to increase the activity levels in the park. And we also realized that the strategic location of the park would also provide an avenue to give a, a great view of the city. And um, the location of the park presents opportunities to install facilities that can help those who access the park to enjoy scenic viewing of the city, like the provision of benches, shade, and then light in those areas. And Moreover, we could also increase the park connection time. That's the amount of time people spend within the parks by installing like fitness equipments in the park and 
which could also serve as a, a complementary to the connected trail systems within the park, because you do find that um, lots of people who come to the park, it's usually for the, the trail. So they just walk around and they just leave. But then you don't really find lots of people like spending more time within the activity areas. So if we, if we could improve that, it could also increase the length of connection time that people have with the park. Next slide. And just to improve park quality and safety, again, lighting, I cannot reiterate how dark it can really get in this park at night. Um, it's kind of scary, actually. The, the playground in the back is completely unlit for the most part. Um, signage, having some rules and contact information, that would also just to help, you know, let get that connection from the public to the park and let them know what resources they actually have around them. Okay, so we could also invest in infrastructure. That's exactly um, uh, a, a very important point that we need to talk about, especially in in the in the playground or the activity areas. When when you get to the park, you you realize that one is more inclined to think that the park is more suited for trails rather than like activity areas. So, which um, goes back to um, corroborate the point that we made earlier that it doesn't help like with people, it, it doesn't really help with the, the amount of time people spend on the park. So there should definitely be an investment in the level of infrastructure in the park. And we would end with the, another point of increasing the pedestrian safety within the park by not only like in terms of the provision of lights, but we could also provide clear and better signage for those who assess the park due to the landscape topography of the park. Thank you. Uh, Jasmine, are you ready? We cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Taking the full issues. <laughs> All right. Um, so I am representing the rubber metals, which I audited. So if we can go to the next slide, that'll be great. Okay. So as far as what's needed to improve access to the park and the surrounding neighborhood, I say like having crosswalks, crosswalks and bike signage would be, would be nice. I did not see any crosswalks like leading to the park or from, and I thought that would be a, good safety feature to add so when kids like cross it won't be as dangerous i also think that with that in mind i also think there should be stop signs and like especially in the t intersection that's like in front of the park like it would it would also increase safety and i think the the surrounding neighborhood itself needs like lighting especially in like the um, parking lots of the apartments that are like surrounding the east and west sides of the park. And um, there were there I, there were a few abandoned buildings or it looked like duplexes or apartments. I wasn't sure, but I mean, if they were abandoned, like maybe we like we, we use them for to provide facilities that the community needs. And um, having um, park signage on like more than one entrance to the park would, would be helpful. The way I got into that park was to one of the apartment lots and there happened to be like a small gap in the, in the fence and that's how I got in. So yeah, uh, next slide please. Uh, okay. 
there's a picture on the way. Um, All right, so what is needed to improve the park activity areas? I think like there needs to be a little more variety on the first playground set. I, on, on that playground set, I only saw like a few, like it looked mostly like used for, for like mostly for toddlers, or for like really young kids. And as for the second part, that there needs to be a little like more space between like the activity area and the street. I feel like the second playground set was like too close to the street, but like there was a sidewalk there. And as for as for the rest of the park, like the, there was only like green space after the playgrounds. So I think it would be nice to re reutilize some of the green spaces for other activities, depending on what residents would like. Like if they want to play basketball or if they want a splash pad, like they could just say, say something. And um, next slide. So as far as um, as far as what's needed to improve the park quality and safety, I think there should be more lighting within the park. When I went there, I did not see much lighting except for one of the playground sets, and I, even that light I think would not be enough. And um, that bathroom did not. I'm sorry, that park did not have a bathroom nor a drinking fountain. Although it did have a picnic table. And speaking of like one of the picnic tables need like, I, I think it needs a picnic shelter. And in addition, I also think that there needs to be a recycling bin. Like there's two trash cans. And I think adding a recycling bin would, would help. And Last thing for what the park needs for quality. Um, I think the park would, it would be nice to include more creative landscaping, like a flower bed, for instance, or, and um, artistic features. Like I did see some painting along some of the parts of the brick fence on the west side of the park, but it would be nice to like paint the whole brick fence make it like stand out and lightly to the residents that live around the park. So yeah. yeah. Hi, my name is Luis and I did my audit on the Steen Bleak Park, which is located in a neighborhood in Rose Park. The address is 1050 West, 800 North in Salt Lake City and it's approximately 0.6 acres. Um, to improve accessibility, there's a couple of things that should be implemented into the park. Firstly, a crosswalk, um, and this would help by allowing people to cross the street at ease. Um, secondly, wayfinding. So I was driving to the park and there is a small sign that indicates that there's a playground nearby, but that's it. There's no words. It doesn't tell you um, really that there's a park coming up, <clears throat> which can also be confused, you know, children at play. Um, and then thirdly, st uh, stop signs and pedestrian signs should be implemented as well to reduce the speed of traffic, which of course enhances safety. And then lastly, I believe they should add some lighting <clears throat> around the sidewalks leading into the park. Um, it would be beneficial and helpful so it's not too dark. And so considering that it's a relatively smart park, there's only so much you can add. And I did some research as to how long playgrounds last and they should be updated or reinstalled every eight to 10 years. Um, and then according to Google Maps, <clears throat> the playground has been there since 2011, which could be even longer. Um, so I think it is time for an update. It's not like in terrible condition, uh, but I think, you know, the community would really enjoy a new playground. 
And then as you can see, I feel like this open space may be too small for any sports activities like baseball, soccer, football. So they should add either more playgrounds or a picnic shelter. I think that's like a perfect spot right there on that picture to the right. Um, or even just more picnic tables. And according to their Google reviews, a lot of people um, in the community left reviews saying they love coming to this park to enjoy like a lunch or a dinner. Um, so I think it would be vital to add, you know, some more spaces for families to come enjoy the park <clears throat> and utilize it. And to improve the park quality and safety, I think the number one priority is to add more lighting throughout the park. The park looks safe in the day, but I'm pretty sure after sunset, you will hardly find anyone at the park. And considering that the area, or excuse me, considering the area it is in, I think adding like an emergency device, like emergency directions would be beneficial and would reduce the stress on the people that enjoy the park from the communities. Thank you. All right, I'm Zach Gardner and the park that I will be presenting is Taufer Park and it's about 7th South and 3rd East. So um, accessing the park is like pretty uh, good. Um, there's um, lots of good bike lanes and as you can see in the picture, the crosswalks are painted nice and colorful, but there is no visible public transit from the park. And there's a rec center that uh, just down the street that possible wayfinding could improve access. So to improve the park, the pad beneath the playground is cracking and very worn. Um, you can see the swing area, there needs, it needs to be remulched and maybe some more shade structures for the playground or the picnic table could improve the area. So to improve park quality, I think landscaping could be greatly improved. Um, there's this patch, you can see the laurels and the cotone aster right there, but those could be improved by filling in the bare ground um, with some maybe more native plants or flowers. Um, there's also around the, the Catholic sanctuary right there that there's a lot of bare dirt around those concrete squares that uh, could be improved. There's also an uprooted stump that could become a safety issue. And thank you. Hi, my name's Taylor. I'm gonna be presenting on Wasatch Hollow Preserve. Um, I'm gonna drop the address in the chat. Um, so it's in the Wasatch Hollow neighborhood, um, which is like Northeastern Sugar House, if you're not familiar. Um, next slide. So I specifically wanted to bike up to this park um, because I found that sense of place really changes depending on the mode of transit you use. So it's um, very accessible via car. I biked all the way up. There were designated bike lines, um, signs, share the road signs up until about 15th East, um, just a couple blocks away from the park. And then there was nothing at all. Um, and then especially coming up, um, as you come up that hill, uh, 13th is pretty steep. That's a good hill to bike. Um, you come up that hill and there's no way to turn in. It's on the left-hand side of the park. So there are no like crosswalks. Um, the closest crosswalk is on 15th East um, and it's just on one side of the road. There's no way for anyone on that side to turn into the park, um, which I think is very interesting because that's actually the only side of the park that's open. Um, all around the other ends of the park have fences or are actually the hollows that are the preserved area. So being the only entrance point to the park, um, if there were more bike routes, uh, more designated signs for bikes um, and then crossing to actually get there would be better. So um, this is mostly used as a dog park. It has an off leash area in the back. There is a recycle bin and two trash bins, but they're all the way towards the front by the parking lot um, and the street and the off leash side is all the way in the back. And so I noticed most, there was some litter there, but most of it is all just doggy bags, um, including as you get to the uh, east side is where the hollows are and you can actually go on the gate and go on those uh, more nature preserved trails. And so there's just a lot of dog waste 
everywhere around that area. Um, people have bagged it, but then have not removed any of the bags. So I think that if trash cans were more accessible, that would um, decrease it. And then I actually had no idea that it was a dog park or that it was off leash. There are no signs at all. Um, I luckily was there like right after work. So it was packed. It was just filled with dogs and I had to come home and Google and um, it turns out that it is an off leash dog park. So if there were more signs um, sort of stating the rules for dogs, where they're allowed to be and at what point they're allowed to be off leash because it's only past the playground, that would be very helpful. Um, and then to improve park safety, a lot, there are a lot of benches there. They're mostly around the playground, um, but they're very, very old. They're all wood benches. They're starting to splinter. There's a lot of rot. Um, all the paint and the, the seal is like coming off. Um, and then everything is kind of covered just in like a light layer of leaves and sticks, which I think we also need to be cognizant of um, sort of the, the time of season it is, you know, the snow is just barely starting to melt. So it's a little bit harder to pick those things up, but um, covering a lot of the pathways and then a lot of the open field area and the playground as well. Um, and then there were some, sorry, I had an image here as well that looks like it didn't um, make it up, but there were um, some cones around one of the sidewalks and taped like it was a taped off area um, like you would tape off a, a hole like a hazard or maybe like a new slab but there didn't seem to be any reason for it to be taped off um, it's a pretty large portion of the path and uh, definitely is not a new slab but it also didn't look like there were any cracks or like weird angles or missing heights that we would sort of need to be signified to not be on that um, it just looks like maybe they weren't cleaned up afterwards um, from a project.